We're back. This is Phil Biadrone here with Jennifer Phillips. My next question for you is about time schedules and deadlines. As post-production, I cannot stop thinking about you have to make that deadline. Yeah. You're on a very, very tight schedule. So if you can explain to me what it means to, to miss a deadline, what are consequences, and what you have to do in order to make a seemingly impossible deadline. OK. Um, there is no option to miss a deadline. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's usually an air date. Um, now, when you don't have an air date, obviously the deadlines are sort of artificial and they're really based on what's been scheduled and budgeted for. But in terms of, um, like, you're working on a Christmas picture um, and it has to air before Christmas, that's then it. that's a deadline. You know, you got to air the week before Christmas, you're airing on the 23rd of December, it's the 26th of November and we start production tomorrow. Um, it's a fast turnaround. Yeah. You have, um, and, and I've been on projects that the turnaround has been that quick, in which case you're editing, obviously, almost before they've shot it, um, and you're sourcing music, and you're doing all sorts of things in pre-production, which might be a very short window, uh, to try and prepare. So you're laying the groundwork with gathering your music, maybe pre-clearing music that you don't even know if you're going to use, just to know if you can get those rights, looking for public domain so you know you don't have to clear it. Um, and, um, and working that end of it. And then it, you're also letting everybody on this end know what's going to happen. So you may have, you, you made, or I like to deliver a script to my sound house and say, this is what I've got. And so they're pulling the jingle bells, the sleigh noises, everything that they think they might be using. Even if the whole sleigh scene gets cut out, we don't need reindeer footprints and, or reindeer you know, hoof, hoof sounds and all of that, it, they've got it, they've sourced it. And so they're sourcing everything in advance. So you kind of have everybody packing their bags before they get on the train, to use that train analogy again. And everybody's bags are packed and we're ready to go. So once you lock an act, or it's sort of locked, or it's loosely locked, you're sending it off to sound. Um, you're booking actors in advance because you're heading towards a holiday. So you're booking actors in advance. Yes. Whether you need, whether you need them or not, you're going to book them because you might need them. Um, and it's easier to cancel a booking than it is to get one at mm -hmm. certain times of the year. So you're booking in advance. Everything is happening while production is shooting. And then in some cases, you're up all night. You're just, you're up all night. And that's not advantageous because when you stay up all night, your timing tends to go. And color correction, believe it or not, after a certain period of time, your eyes go and, and you're not seeing colors the way they really are. Um, so you're reading scopes. and So color correction you really try to do with fresh eyes every day. Um, and sound, you do get ear fatigue. So it's not advantageous to do that. You might have two teams working at the same time. You might have one stage missing, mixing one half and another stage mixing another half. Um, so you really try to, you try to schedule as many people as you can as fast as you can and hit every deadline. It's like music, you know, it's like you're the drummer, you gotta hit every beat. And if you hit every beat, you're golden. If you miss a beat, now you're having to make up time. And how do we make up time? How do we drive faster? There's only so much time. Do you bring in another body? Do you go another shift? Um, exactly, how do, you, how do you make that happen? And that's my job to figure that out and then present the options. So from pre-production all the way to post-production, you're constantly in motion and laying the groundwork. If you're, yeah, if you're on a short deadline, yeah. Okay, that, yeah. that clears up things. When I think of post-production, I think them sipping martinis and waiting for the footage to come on in, you know. But <laughs> it's a fast turnaround. I, I didn't know you were so involved in the pre and production. Yeah, because if you only have a certain window, then you can't wait for the cut to source the music you've got to source that music in advance. I tend to do that anyway during production. I tend to read through a script and think, oh, you know, this might be good or that might be good and try and gather things anyway. But um, when you're on those short deadlines, you gotta have it yesterday. Um, and sometimes you're calling friends saying, hey, you did you know, a picture last year that was similar to this one. Um, you know, what did you use? What did you not use? Your post house is all primed. And so you're walking through those doors, and they know you might have two rooms running at the same time. Wow. You might have half your show color correcting in one room and half the show in the other room, and you've got the DP and the director changing rooms. Um, so this is what I just did, and this is, you know, <laughs> and, and that works.
And then you watch it all down and make your tweaks and away you go. What would be the last step? Uh, color correction, sound, what is like the final touch? The final touch that goes on it um, is usually your titles and your, your sound. Oh, I mean, course. your titles usually are on anyway, but um, your sound is the last thing that goes, um, goes on. Partially, they need the most time, you know, and we can color correct while they're mixing. Cool, cool. Well, it seems like you run a very, very steady train. <laughs> <laughs>